Okay, anatomy students, it's chapter 24, the digestive system. So our digestive system allows us to get nutrients from the environment. So nutrients from food that we eat. All right, and that is used to build things. Okay, and that's known as an anabolic reaction. Um, to break them down, that is catabolic. Your digestive tract um, is known as the gastrointestinal tract or the alimentary ca canal. It's a muscular tube. It's actually one long tube from your mouth to your anus. And uh, it includes accessory organs, um, organs that help, such as the teeth, tongue, and other glands that we'll talk about as we get further through the digestive system. So I want to point out some structures here. And those structures are right here. So your mouth. All right, so this is, you're going to take in food, you're going to use your teeth for mechanical digestion. Uh, your mouth also uh, moistens the food with this saliva. Your pharynx, your pharynx is your throat, as you know, and so that is involved um, in helping when you swallow your food, go into the esophagus. Esophagus is the transport tube that brings food from your mouth to your stomach, which is next here. The food goes into the stomach and there is both chemical and mechanical digestion that takes place there. Chemical is going to change it chemically. So from like a starch into a sugar and mechanical is just going to break things down into smaller pieces. Okay, and then the stomach, it does this through muscular contractions. Then the food goes into your small intestine and this is where most uh, chemical digestion occurs. All right, so lots of enzymes there, and then also uh, absorption takes place of water and substrates, vitamins and ions. All of your digestion is finished by the time food has gone through the small intestine. And so then um, the large intestine is next, and this dehydrates the fecal matter, your poop, and um, it compacts it together, and it gets it ready to be eliminated. Some accessory organs are your teeth, mechanical digestion, mastication is chewing. Your tongue is assessed in mechanical digestion. It helps you swallow and also sense, um, you know, what's in your mouth. The salivary glands are right here. And they secrete uh, saliva and that helps moisten and lubricate. And also there are enzymes in your salivary glands. One is known as salivary amylase. Uh, and that's where, you know, in your mouth, you have mechanical digestion from chewing, but you also have uh, um, chemical from the enzymes in your saliva. They allow you to break down carbohydrates, starches into sugars. Food does not go in your liver. That's why this is an accessory organ. But your liver makes uh, bile, and that is very important for the digestion of fats. It's emulsification. It's just large fat to small fat. So that is mechanical digestion. Also, it stores nutrients, um, and your liver has other functions that are not related to digestion. The gallbladder is uh, a storage center, so it has a duct from the liver, and that stores the bile. The pancreas is uh, right here. Um, you can see the pancreas, and this secretes buffers and uh, other digestive enzymes. So in the stomach, uh, it's very acidic, and then the food, but the stomach has a mucosa lining that uh, protects the stomach wall, but when the food goes from the stomach into the intestine, it doesn't, the intestines don't have the same mucus layer, and so the pancreas uh, basically secretes a buffer, like a base, so that the intestine is protected. And also the pancreas has digestive enzymes in its juices. So there's different processes of the digestive system. They're ingestion, mechanical digestion and propulsion, chemical digestion, secretion, absorption, and defecation. So ingestion, taking food in. Mechanical, like I said, uh, breaking things down into smaller pieces, chewing, shearing your food, moving the food throughout the digestive tract. Chemical is going to be chemically breaking down food into fragments um, for absorption, 
Uh, so this is going to involve enzymes uh, to do this. So changing a starch, which is a carbohydrate, a more complex one into a sugar, that would be uh, chemical digestion. Secretion, there's a lot of secretions that go on in the digestive system. So releasing water, enzymes, buffers, like I talked about in your pancreas and salts. This happens by the epithelial layer of the digestive tract, uh, different organs, like I said, the pancreas, the liver, um, and then also the gallbladder. So we could say the gallbladder secretes the bile, okay? So that would be a secretion. Absorption, so this is uh, important. So this is movement of organic molecules, electrolytes, um, vitamins, minerals, and water. Um, this happens across the digestive epithelium. And this is into interstitial fluid of the digestive tract. So there's fluid in between like your organs and then your blood vessels. So that fluid is kind of, can sometimes be like a transitional place okay, that nutrients um, can flow to get into the bloodstream. And then defecation, that is pooping, uh, elimination of waste from the body, all right? And so that is our fecal matter or feces. The lining of your digestive tract, okay, there has to be um, safeguards against, um, you know, the acids that are in the stomach, as I was talking about before, or enzymes or any type of mechanical stress, stresses such as abrasion. Um, and so it has to also be protected from bacteria that could be ingested in something that you eat. So if we talk about food poisoning, um, you hear about E. coli breakouts all the time. And we have good bacteria that is there all the time, but then other bacteria that should not be there. So there has to be safeguards for the digestive system. So the peritoneum is a serous membrane uh, lining of the peritoneal cavity. And there's a visceral and there's a, a parietal. Okay, so you'll look at when we're dissecting, you'll be able to see this. So visceral, it's going to be right on the organ and parietal is going to line the inner surfaces of the body wall. So there's a fluid that is produced. So this is similar to what we have learned with our heart and our lungs. Uh, there's a fluid that is produced and it allows the sliding of those two surfaces so there's no friction or irritation. It's crazy that it's about seven liters that are produced and absorbed. Um, but there's very little there at one time, so it shouldn't be there. And ascites is when something is going wrong and that peritoneal fluid builds up. So uh, sometimes this is a sign of something really wrong. Sometimes people with cancer get this. They're very skinny, but then they get this big belly, and that is why. Mesenteries. Look this up. The mesentery was classified, I can't remember how many years ago, as its own organ. Uh, there are double sheets of this peritoneal membrane, and they suspend within the digestive tract, and it, it connects the peritoneums together. It's a route from the digestive tract for blood vessels, nerves, lymphatic vessels, and because it has all these uh, functions, you know, it has the blood vessels, the nerves, the vessels, and it stabilizes. It kind of holds all of our digestive organs together, and it also prevents intestines from getting tangled. So this is extremely important. So there is um, something known as the greater and the lesser omentum. And this is a lot of, has a lot of adipose tissue, which is fat. And this conforms and shapes around the organs. It cushions or pads, provides insulation. And if we have too much fat in our diet, this is how you'll see people get that beer belly, the jiggly fat. So this is a picture. I just wanted to show you what I'm talking about. Here's the lesser omentum. Here's the greater omentum. You can see there's some fat deposits there. And then here is, I didn't go over every single part of the mesentery, but here's some of it. So this is like, you can see how it will prevent, prevent the tangling. So it, it holds every thing in place. 
Tissue-wise, so histology, tissue-wise, there's major layers. There's mucosa, uh, submucosa, so under the mucosa, the muscular layer, and the serosa. Uh, the lining uh, that varies by region. So in your stomach, um, there's longitudinal folds in the empty stomach. Uh, there's permanent transverse, uh, so longitudinal transverse folds in the small intestine. So thinking of what uh, the organs do, it should make sense what their structures are like. So just to show you the layers here. So here is the mucosa submucosa, then muscular layer, and then the serosa. And so see, you can see these longitudinal folds here, and then these are circular folds. So if we look at a circular fold, and we can talk about villi that are, these are the little villi. So like the little nipple-like projections there, um, we would say like capilla before. These little villi are, they're similar to the cilia that are in your uh, pharynx and trachea that would sweep the dust particles out, but like, like in their shape. So this is the, these villi increase the surface area and it allows for absorption. So when we eat food and break it down, it can get into the bloodstream. So these circular folds are here and you can see these are blood vessels. So it should make sense on how everything can get to where it needs to go. So here's your inner mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer, and the serosa. Just a little bit about that cirrhosis. Uh, that's the serous membrane that covers that muscular layer. Um, it's along most portions of the digestive tract. Um, and if there's areas where the cirrhosis is lacking, there's adventia. So this is a bunch of collagen fibers that attach digestive tract to adjacent structures. Uh, the motility of the digestive tract so there's rhythmic cycles. So food has to move through the digestive tract. Okay, and so that's done this by smooth muscle tissue. And it's like a pace setter. Um, there's waves of contractions that spread throughout uh, the musculature, musculature, excuse me, of the digestive tract. All right, so here is something that you will need to be familiar with. All right, so this is peristalsis, and I don't think that you don't have the stuff sitting in your packet. Uh, so peristalsis is alternate waves of contraction and relaxation that moves food through the digestive tract. All right, and so when we talk about the food, we refer to it as a bolus. So when you put food in your mouth and you chew it and you swallow, it's all that moist ball of food, which is kind of gross. Um, that is called the bolus. And so there's circular muscles behind the bolus contract, okay, and then the circular muscles ahead relax. So it's this alternate waves of contraction, relaxation, and that is peristalsis. So circular muscles are going to behind contract and then ahead relax, longitudinal ahead contract um, that shortens adjacent segments, and then the wave of contraction forces the bolus forward. So, you know, if we're going from the mouth to the anus, this is the circular muscle, the initial state, and then you can see it's contracting behind the bolus. And then you can see that the longitudinal muscles ahead of the bolus, so these are your longitudinal muscles, they are contracting. And then there's a wave of contraction in the circular muscle layer that forces the bolus forward. There's segmentation, and this is these are cycles of contraction that churn and fragment the bolus. Um, so this is like how with, within the intestines, the contents get mixed around. There's not really a set pattern. It doesn't push in any way direction, that is peristalsis. This is more of the mixing of the contents and mixing the contents with all those enzymes and secretions that come in from like the liver, the gallbladder, or the pancreas, or the intestine itself that sends enzymes in. All right, that is it, you guys.